This video is going to cover looking at Revit as a tool for some early design thinking and space planning. Uh, in particular, looking at grabbing a site, what we can see right here, 19th and Main in Kansas City, Missouri, as well as beginning to understand spaces and square footage using the room tool. So we'll cover um, the room tags and how to set those up as um, and customize them uh, and, and begin to, to build um, a basic graphical floor plan. So let's start by grabbing this site. So I'm just going to use my print screen function. Oh wait, you know, before that, we, we want to do one thing. We need a known dimension across the site. So I'm going to look at measuring from edge to edge. So we're looking at, at putting a conceptual building right here on this parking lot. And inside of Google Maps, uh, I can right click and go to measure distance. And let's go from edge to edge. And we're going to get a readout on the distance and it is right at 120 feet. I think it's a really safe assumption for us to make as 120 feet. So with that, let's go ahead and I'm even going to keep that on there for right now. Let's go ahead and do our print screen. And then we'll move over to Photoshop. and paste that image in place. Well, that's not what I was expecting. That's kind of exciting. Let's try that one more time. File, new, okie dokie, paste. There we go. Huh, looks kind of fun. Use my crop tool, which is already active, and just bring that in and hit enter. File, save as, I'm just gonna write this as site2.jpg and OK. So we'll move to Revit and inside of Revit I'm going to go to my insert image site 2 and we'll place the image in place. Now this currently is not going to be 120 feet. This is just uh, an image. It has no idea what it is or what it represents. If I'm measuring across right now um, we have 42 feet it looks like. So we need to dive into scaling this image so that we can use it as a background template to start building a plan upon. And this isn't as accurate as it should be for final drawings. It's a very important thing. We need to go out and do a survey, some of those types of things, but sometimes we need to begin the conceptual work before we have that information. Or in the case of what I'm really doing this video for, if you're in an academic situation and you don't have a survey of this site, this is going to be a technique that, that gets you very, very close. So one of the first things you might notice in this, if I draw a line across, I need to rotate my image. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line across there and let's move that right around to the edge of a building. And I want to rotate this image so that everything is square. So I'm going to select my overall image, rotate, and I'm going to move, left click and drag my rotation, my, the axis of my rotation to the end of that line and I'm going to zoom in close enough to snap on the edge of the building. And if you notice, Revit wants to snap my first displacement line to my line. Um, the workaround for that is SO for snap off. So SO to turn the snap off. I'm going to left click once and then left click again. And it's go going to rotate that image for me so that everything is sort of lined up a little bit more neatly on my XY axis. Next, I want to go ahead and we're going to use annotation lines, detail lines, and I'm going to place a line right here where I started my dimension. And I'm going to offset that line 120 feet because that's the dimension that I would like to have. And then I'm going to copy this line from point to point. So essentially I have three things. I have the current dimension and what I would like that dimension to be. So I'm going to select my image and then select the scale tool. I'm going to use, this is my base point right here. So I'm going to say, that's my base point of the scale command. My next left click, this is what I have. My third left click is this is what I would like my scale to be. And now I have that image scaled so that that, that distance right there is exactly 120 feet. Okay, so let's just look at that really quick. There are my three dimensions. Let's change my scale so it's a little easier to see. Okay. 
So what I had was 43 feet 9 inches. Um, now I have that same dimension is what was 43.9 is now 120. So let's get rid of those and let's get rid of these guides. And let's go ahead and move that image so it's a little bit more centered in my north, east, south, west elevation views. So the next thing that I want to do is come in and let's start looking at adding some basic rooms in so we can begin to understand uh, square footage, the size of space that we can start working with. So I'm going to, going to go to architecture, wall, and I'm just going to use this generic 8-inch wall. I am really never a fan of drawing by the center line. I only use that maybe 1% of the time when I'm drawing walls. I typically prefer to do either finish face exterior or if it's a more in-depth detailed Revit model I might be using core face exterior. But I'm going to use finish face exterior for right now and that's going to set up how my uh, wall is being drawn in. You can see it's not at the center of the wall but it's the outside edge of the wall and I'm just going to trace my property. All right, now that I have that, I actually can begin understanding um, how I can start dividing this up as a space. And I might do one or two other things really quickly. Um, I kind of want to hide this image now. A lot of times it's going to get in the way. But let's do add just a little bit of detail with it while it's still there. Uh, I'm going to go to my detail lines. And I'm just going to draw really quickly from this outside edge. the edge of these sidewalks right through here. One more detail line right through here. And I'm going to, to, well, let's not hide it yet. Let's go ahead and let me get these edges put together. Detail lines, I'm going to use the um, fillet arc tool here to here. Get that edge in and then same thing, fillet arc tool on this side so that I'm getting roughly the um, diameter or the radius of those pieces of the curve, curve and sidewalk. So with this done, I can select my image, hide and view element, and I'm left with that. It's just a little bit cleaner and easier to work with now at this point. Let's move my elevation line back just a little bit. And eventually I might want to actually model out that sidewalk, but this is going to give me an idea for right now, the basic dimensions that I have to work with along this edge. So one of the first things I want to do is go ahead and look at room tags. So that's going to be underneath the architecture tab and room. And I can simply place a room somewhere in the middle of this space. And this is great for scheduling, but right now I'm interested in using Revit to begin some space planning, understanding the sizes of rooms, the types of rooms that I can start working with. So one of the first things that I might want to do is change this tag. First of all, I want to make it graphically a little bit more in the background, and I would like it to show a little bit of additional information for me. So I'm not as interested in the room number. I would just like name and square foot. So I'm going to select my tag, and let's go to Edit Family. With Edit Family turned on, I am going to um, remove the room name, and I'm going to select, use the tab button to select the square footage and move them up. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to edit the label, not the label, what do I want to edit? The text is what I would like to edit. Let's see here. Edit type and let's change the color to a lighter gray. And same thing with this, edit the type to a lighter gray. And that simply kind of pushes that graphical information a little bit further into the background. So I'm going to load that tag back into my project. And I'm going to overwrite the existing. And now when I select this tag, I can edit the type. And I want to turn off room number, and I want to turn on area. 
So you can see now I've got this updated. I've got a room name, which I can change to space one. And I've got the square footage of the entry level. As I begin to add additional rooms in, so let's go back to architecture and wall. And let's just draw another wall in. It's going to immediately divide space one and space two together. So I need to put in another room tag. So now I have space one, space two. So I can begin to plan these different pieces out. And if you notice, as I move the wall, it's going to update the square foot uh, total, the square footage total. And I can continue to add in walls and different spaces and different room tags. And it's going to continue to update that information for me. The next thing that we might want to do with this is have sort of a room within a room that's not separated by a wall. Like let's say this is an entry space right here, but there's not actually a wall there. So there's nothing that I would like to draw in terms of building that in. So to do that, there is a room separator line. And I can come across from the edge of my wall. Let's go right to that corner, right to here. And what you can see is this now has a room bounding that is defined by that separator line. So without putting an additional wall in, I can actually come in and do another space and call that something like not lovey, but lobby. So I can go through and begin working those things together. The last thing I want to show is a simple little technique to begin looking at some color on these. Um, and we'll show that, we'll put that together, uh, picking up right here in the next video.